I greet you all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. And please do come in and join us. I welcome you all here this morning as we say the Eucharist and we remember and give thanks for the life of Freddie Lubin on this first anniversary of his passing. If you are following from home, you are incredibly welcome to join with us in worship and thanksgiving. And Lynette, thank you for gathering your family and friends so that we can all worship together. Remember and give thanks. The Lord be with you. As we gather together, let us pray together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And in this penitential season, let us now remember our imperfections in the sight of Almighty God. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. Now let us confess our sins, remembering before God the times when we have fallen from temptation into sin. Lord, we confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, we confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We take a moment of silence and then we will pray our collect, our prayer for this day. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory, before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now David will read our first lesson. Good morning. The first reading is Psalm 147, reading verses 13 to the end. Sing praise to the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates, and he has blessed your children within you. He has established peace in your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends forth his command to the earth, 
and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool and scatters the hoarfrost like ashes. He casts down his hailstones like mortals of bread. Who could endure his frost? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and judgments to Israel. He has not dealt so with any other nation. They did not know his laws. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and, and to, to the Son, Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, ever and ever shall be, world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Please stand. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you and also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus is speaking. Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one jot of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus said, I have not come to abolish the law or the prophets. What's going on here? Jesus was speaking to the people from the established church of the time, the children of Israel, the people of Jewish faith. And the basis of the Torah, the Old Testament, the part of the Old Testament, which is still the established Bible for the Jewish people, covered first the law and then the prophets. And of course, as always, the whispers were going around Jesus, the Son of God, has come to overturn everything that Moses, Elijah, and the prophets have spoken. Jesus put that rumor to bed. I have not come to abolish the law or the prophets. Now, that's half of the story. If he had not come to abolish the law or the prophets, what had he come for? And he told those who were listening those who had ears to listen, he'd come to fulfill the commandments, the promises, the covenant, which all people, Jewish or otherwise, should attempt to keep. Now that is one of those things which in principle sounds good, sounds easy, sounds reasonable, sounds possible, but then in practice 
when times are hard, it's not so easy. It's tempting to think that it's only as we grow older that we experience pain and hardship and, and loss. I've just come from St. John's Junior School, ages 4 to 11. And we were speaking about when the going gets tough, the tough get going. The themes are the same in school and in church. And we were talking about the difficulties of change. I asked who had moved home in the last year, and there was one young chap who'd moved from Uxbridge to Harrow. He was only about nine. He had found it really difficult. He'd left, family, he'd left friends. He had to change school. He didn't find the environment in Harrow the same as Uxbridge. He is nine. Another wee guy had started to wear specs. The optician had discovered that uh, his vision really needed corrective lenses for a year. He felt dizzy for the first 24 hours. He's eight. It was hard. So the reality of life is something which affects us all. All of us. I don't know how much we as people listen to the words of the collects that we pray each time we come to worship. If we don't, it's a pity. Today's was a beautiful prayer. It confirmed that our dear son Jesus Christ did not go up to joy, but first he suffered pain. We once suffer pain. We suffer pain. Our Lord and Saviour suffered pain. The prayer goes on. He didn't go into glory before he was crucified. He suffered the pain of death. Why? So that we might be forgiven for our imperfections. And so here we have the challenge. Today especially, we remember hard times. But let us not just remember the hard times. Let us remember the wonderful and joyful times of fellowship, of music, of laughter, of singing, of dancing. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. The prayer also tells us how to get going. We prayed, walking in the way of the cross, may we find it none other than the way of life and of peace. Walking in the way of the cross. Walking, carrying the burdens and realities of life the pain of a wee guy moving house, the, the confusion of a wee chap wearing specs for the first time, the horrible reality of having to continue in life without those who we have loved, walking in the way of the cross. We pr may we pray, may we find it a way of life and peace. How do we keep living through pain, through hardship, through difficult circumstances in our lives? With peace in our hearts. The peace that the world cannot give us, however much money we might have. The peace which comes only through God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May we walk in the way of the cross and through it may we truly find the way of life and of peace. Amen. We're going to pray now and the first prayer will be to repeat the collect. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. This prayer we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now we continue our prayers, giving thanks to you that we are here today. We thank you that we have this place where we can worship. We thank you that we have had the will and the wish and the ability to gather together. We pause for a moment and acknowledge that everything we have is a gift from you. May we value those gifts. May we use those gifts so that as we walk in the way of the cross, we may find true life and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for our country and for the world in which we live. At this time when so many people in this, our country, are living lives which are difficult. May they have peace in their hearts. And may we, whenever and wherever we are able, turn to those who are finding life hard and be there for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we remember those who we know and love who have a special need for your healing presence at this time. Some of them are known only to us and in the silence of our prayers we commend them to you. That your peace may surround them and that they may know that they are not alone. From our parish prayer, prayer list we continue to pray for George and Nadine Baldwin, for Eddie Morris, for L. Coleman, for John Frith, Angela and Ian Kidd, for Doris Lubin, Graham Mitchell, Hilary King, Alexa, John Beard, and Lucy Cuthbert. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, in these prayers, we remember and we give thanks for those who we've known and loved who are no longer with us. We thank you for the joy we shared, for the love that we exchanged. And we commend them to your mercy and blessing. Among the recently deceased, we remember Margaret, Robbie, uh, Rundrum. We pray for her friends and for her children, Robin and Heather, at this time of great sadness for them. And then from our memorial book, at this time of their anniversaries of death, we commend the immortal souls of Edith May Seared, William Shaylor, John Patrick Hills, Vivian Graham, Freddie Lubin, Percy Leonard Martin, Percy Henry Watts, William Frederick Shaylor, and Stanley Kenneth Hepburn. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. And now we draw together all of our prayers, the prayers of our hearts and these spoken prayers, as we pray together. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Now, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. I wave to you a sign of peace. Peace be with you all. And for those of you following at home, from those of us here in All Saints, we wish you and we share the peace with you also. We prepare the table for the Eucharist. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and we join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who on the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given to you for the forgiveness of sins. And say, we're after supper. He took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, 
your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. And now let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. The body and blood of Christ our Lord. If you will, I invite you to receive the Eucharist in the wafer, intincted with the mark of the cross in the Eucharistic wine, the body and blood of Christ. If you prefer, you may have a blessing. The body of Christ. blood of Christ our Lord. The body and 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 blood of Christ our Lord. Christ our Lord.
Let us pray. Merciful Lord, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now may the peace and the grace and the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you who are here and with those whom you love wherever they may be today and always. Amen. Very briefly, as we finish this worship, I thank you again for being here this morning. And it's wonderful to see a number of you from the, uh, the Tower team are here worshipping with us this morning. And Lynette, as we enjoy coffee after the service, the Tower team will ring in memory of Freddie. We will have a peel. So there will be coffee and there will be some refreshments in the blue corner. Please do stay if you're able. Um, just two other very short notices. If you're visiting, you'll be wondering if you've got any imagination whatsoever, what on earth is that lot doing in the Holy Sanctuary? Well, thankfully, the stained glass windows are back. So it's there because we had to have them repaired. They're back in, and next week the scaffolding will be remo removed and we'll have our church back as our own. So we just have to put up with it for a little bit longer, but at least now we can see the beauty of the uh, stained glass windows. And the only other announcement is to remind everybody that this coming Sunday is a very special Sunday. It's Mothering Sunday. We'll be worshipping God here at 10 o'clock. The theme will be very much for families, and there will be gifts for all of the ladies. So please, do encourage people to come and come yourselves if you're able. 10 o'clock on Sunday. Whatever you're going to be doing these coming days, wherever you'll be, go in peace. Love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>